If we come to the flying dove, or the flying dove spreads its wings, I've heard it called, um, it's a really nice traditional quigong exercise that opens out the chest. Anything that opens out the chest is good because we spend a lot of time compressed against gravity. Again, I'm over exaggerating there, but again, these, these organs get very compressed. So anything that opens out the chest is good for us and all the organs in the chest. This one is the 13th of the 18 form Qigong sequence, but again, I've done the eight brocades at the beginning, then added this on, 18 form Qigong sequence, then another nine Himalayan, nine form that learnt in the Himalayas. So basics like 35 moves, three forms stuck together, okay? So this is the 13th of the 18 form Qigong sequence, eight brocades at the beginning. So this is like 21 or 21st move of the whole 35, the three forms put together. Don't have to worry about that. You can do these singly or in the sequence I've put them. Okay, I put in brackets 35 and then whatever number it is, but it doesn't matter. We're going not down the traditional route, breathing the belly like a balloon, the normal quick on way. We're adding the Pilates and the hypnotic responses and the yogic responses within the breath. So it's a mixed breath. Okay, again, it's just breathing at the end of the day, so whatever benefit you get, that's great. These are all linked traditionally to certain specific organs and electromagnetic rivers within the forms, the traditional forms, the sequences, Qigong sequences. Okay, I'll move that out of the way. So this, as we've all opened out the chest ones, is common sense. It's gonna get every single organ cell in your body but it will specifically get the heart, the lungs, the pericardium, the heart lining, because we're opening out the chest and all the organs in the chest. If you bend over, you will get the kidneys more. Um, traditionally, these organs will be benefited as you do this. So, as you do this also, really it will benefit every organ because the breath will reach every square inch an organ cell sinew the body okay so don't get too caught up if you want to focus on an organ though free um feel free to do that um any sort of problems you might oh, right, i'm going to focus on this organ do it nothing's set in stone again even though it's set in the traditional ways you know even they vary from person to person so it tells you you know, if you, you want to focus on an organ or something you want to benefit in the body a problem area then do that Okay, and really put your mind on that. If you just want to do it, I would suggest, more suggest, do it and just feel the benefits of it. And be safe in the knowledge that pretty much every organ, cell, sinew of the body will benefit because the breath will reach every single organ, cell, sinew of the body. Okay, so again, I digress there. I'm going to go straight in with the breathing. So... Zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. The only way to explain your pelvic floor, if you want to, you want to go to the toilet, and you want to stop yourself going, that's your pelvic floor, okay, in short. That will link onto our corset muscle, our powerhouse, our girdle strength, three layers deep. Just all segmentally stabilizing the spine. So again, the Pilates way of telling this, get the thumbs, hips, and you'll see, you'll run and meet here. This is like the B line, bikini line, belt line, whatever you want to call it. So if you do that, if you cough <coughs> like that, you will feel from that area where the pelvic floor ends, everything come in. So that links onto our corset. They go together, their muscles. The transverse abdominis, the corset muscle, links on like clean film to the end of our pelvic floor on the B line here. Okay, so they go together. You can't do one without the other. Engage pelvic floor or tuck in the belly button to get the corset. They will go together. But segmentally do them both anyway. Zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. Okay. And that will get this corset muscle three layers deep, linking them like cling film to our pelvic floor there. Okay, so again, you don't have to know that, but if you do know that, that gives you a bit of an awareness. Sometimes having that awareness will help you engage these muscles in the right manner. A bit like an amnesia if you don't sometimes. So with that, as you right now, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, simply breathe in through the nose, and exhale through pursed lips, as if you're blowing out a candle through pursed lips, okay? As you do that, just simply feel that breath going in low and deep to these lower lobes of lungs. You wanna see where that is? 
Get the two middle finger touching underneath the breastbones as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals. Breathe in through the nose. And exhale through purse leg, shoulders down. I just realized my shoulders are up then. But as you do this, you'll be able to see this will happen. The two middle fingers will slightly part and come back to touch each other. That just shows you where the breath's going into the lower lobes of lungs. Okay, so you can take your hands down there and just carry on zipping up pelvic floor and scooping out your abdominals. Low battery again, go away. And keep on breathing into these lower lobes of the lungs, the intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. As though someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out inside your ribs and letting go. Okay, because there's nowhere else the breath to go, and that will help us use the pelvic floor and the corset in the right manner. As you do that right now, that lateral thoracic breathing, breathing in through the nose, exhaling through pursed lips as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, Pilates style. Now again, we go a little bit more yoga style. We close the mouth. Same deal though, zip up and scoop out your abdominals, breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Okay, and that just help you lengthen the whole wheel cycle, the breath a little bit longer. Make, lengthens that breath. Okay, and as it lengthens that breath, you can allow that to happen as you're zipping up pelvic floor still and scooping out your abdominals. That would make that a little bit more yogic, cleansing, cleansing breath through this smaller filter through the nose. So as you do that right now, you can even take your mind to that out breath and consciously elongate that out breath, quadruple it, double it, triple it, whatever you like, the out breath. Just make it slightly longer than the in breath. And as you're doing that right now, you'll feel them parasympathetic nervous system responses. So again, a little bit like sort of hypnotic breath. The in breath's conscious thought, the out breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out breath longer than the in breath, we're just encouraging sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation to all be benefited by elongating the out breath longer than the in breath. Okay. Even cellular communications improved. Lovely. On a cellular level, as you elongate the out breath longer than the in breath, the housekeeping parts of the body are being benefited on a massive beneficial level. Okay, so safe in the knowledge of that, you can just carry on with that breath, that's, that's good enough. If you want to take it on a little bit more advanced, if you can't get it, don't worry, just carry on doing this breath. If you want to take it on to a little bit more advanced yogic breath, then you can go to Ujjayi breath, victorious breath in Sanskrit. So to do that, we grip it the esophagus and we make a sort of sign whistling silky raspy sound as we're still zipping up pelvic for all and scooping out your abdominals. So again, it sounds like this. It's a shoulders stay down and it's a That was a bit broken, that breath. But again, I'll do that so you can hear it more evenly. That soft, silky, whistling Ujjayi breath, seashore breathing. Now that gives the mind something to focus on. It's natural focusing breath you do in everyday life. Sometimes you're doing a fine motor skill, like you know, a bit of DIY or threading the needle, etc. You'll use that sign breath okay naturally but we're overemphasizing it that gives the mind something to focus on within the breathing okay but if you can't get that don't worry just carry on breathing into these lower lobes of lungs that's nearly sort of ashtanga yoga breath not quite okay if you can get that raspy sound from the back of the throat and get the ujjayi breath that'll help us build the heat within the body help us fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body Help us stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps us weight control, etc. Otherwise, just carry on breathing into them lower lobes of lungs as you're zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals, taking a navel towards the spine. So in vinyasa, breath synchronized movement in Sanskrit, we're going to link that now, okay, to 
the flying dove. Again, it's the same deal. These, the next one's the same. Imagine this is the heel here, the foot. The toe can come up and back down each time. I'm gonna demonstrate that, but it's a bit far away. You can do that. Any trouble with the knee, you can keep the foot flat on the floor, which I'll demonstrate. Okay, you can go as deep as you like, or you can snap as high as you like when you've got any sort of back problems. Again, make this unique to you, with the speed and the tempo and the modifications we give. Okay, see what suits you. Nothing set in stone, like I say. Okay, and it's just movement. So from here, I'm gonna calibrate and synchronize and integrate that with the movement. I'm gonna go back, the flying dove. It's just like this, hands are just moving like seaweed on the bottom seabed. And then again from here, we're coming back and going forwards. Again, the foot's coming up and back. Breathing in whenever you like and exhaling for as long as you like. If you wanna go deeper, go deeper. You keep that foot on the floor, feel free. Otherwise, you go deep as you like to relax and let go. Get that stretch on the hamstrings, the glutes, the buttocks, shoulders down. Exhale. As you zip up pelvic floor and sweep out your abdominals, thinking tiny waist. Exhale for as long as you like. Again, like I say, keep that foot on the floor or not. Again, I'm going to open your arms out a little bit wider, a bit short and spacey. You can do that. So you're breathing in and exhaling, rolling forwards. It sounds like this. Elongate the breath for as long as you like, and then simply start again. Nothing set the motion like that. You can go down as deep as I am, or not. Or you can keep that foot flat on the floor, or keep on partially and emptying and filling that leg. Again, the lower abdomen is going to be squeezed like a pump or a bellows. Again, I'm not doing too much on the movement. You can get the movement quite easy. It's more the breath. Again, that's the bridge between the mind and the body. That's our gauge. That elongated out breath. To see how deeply we can get into them postures without even trying or trying not to try. Lovely elongated out breath with this one. Okay. Lovely. Be around the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath. It weaves that tapestry of relaxation and every single organ, cell, sinew the body at will. Lovely. So it's the wild goose next, number 14 and 18 form Qigong sequence. Um, and that was number 13, the flying dove. But again, see what suits you. And just be aware. Just, you know, just if it feels good, then great. It's just movement, don't get too caught up. This is exactly like that in that form. It's movement, I've took the movement, because there's such good movements in the Qigong sequences, and we just added some other bits in it. Um, it's not sacrilege or anything, it's just movement, breath synchronized movement, vinyasa. Lovely, bang.